Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast, a podcast for English teachers in search of creative teaching strategies. I'm Betsy Potash, and I'm glad to welcome you to episode 89. Let's pause in shelter at home whirlwind mode and talk about how things are going. This episode is one small part creative teaching strategies, two big parts life at my house right now. So today I'm going to start by sharing five quick, helpful resources and tips if you're still trying to define what distance learning will look like for you. Then I'm going to talk about what's working as we build a work from home and homeschool routine at my house in case any of what's working and not working here might help you as you navigate the same waters at your house. So I've been digesting a lot of content, a lot of social media, a lot of conversations in my Facebook group, Creative High School English. I hope you're in there Um, over the last few weeks about distance learning. And I just want to talk about a few resources and ideas um, that has sort of swum to the surface for me as I think back over it all. I think the number one thing that I think is super important for us all to consider right now has to do with boundaries. And I've seen this topic approached by a lot of different people um, in some really helpful ways. But with this teaching from home and online learning, it really opens teachers up to an issue that's always an issue (laughs) for teachers. And that is when to set aside time to work and, and time to be with family and time to rest and recharge. And it is so easy when you're working from home and it's just sort of like oh, I could just quickly check my emails or I could just like quickly answer that question while I'm cooking this pasta for dinner or whatever to just let work um, flow through every aspect of your day. And I think it's really, really okay and helpful even um, to let students know when you're available and when you're not. And I think... You know, you don't have to respond to messages from parents at nine o'clock at night or questions from students at 11 o'clock at night. I think it's totally awesome and great to say that you are going to be around for work from 830 in the morning until four in the afternoon and that you'll try to answer your emails once in the morning, once at lunch and once in the late afternoon or um you know, that that you welcome messages during the evening, but that you're going to respond to them as soon as you wake up in the morning and just really shut it down at some point while you're spending time with your family, while you're going for a walk, while you're watching some Netflix, because that's all just as important right now, I think, as, as being available um, all the time. <laughs> all right, number two, I have seen so many lists of um, different, apps, different tools, different free resources going around. It's hard to even keep up with them all. One of my favorite big roundups that I've seen and the one I'm going to recommend if you're still looking for different online tools is the one Jennifer Gonzalez recently published on Cult of Pedagogy. Um, I think it's called like a gently curated list of helpful tools for distance learning. And she has just pulled together some really helpful main ideas and nice tech tools. She's a total tech guru. Um, So I really trust her when it comes to this aspect of distance learning. She knows a lot about apps and online programs. And so I think if you're still trying to figure out how you want to make your connections um, and which websites will be most helpful to you, I'm going to point you toward um, Jennifer because she does a great job. Okay, number three. I want to share as a resource my own shop on Teachers Pay Teachers because I'm trying to post um, free activities for this COVID period whenever I can. So far, I've got a free design thinking project up there and a free blackout poetry project up there that's kind of coronavirus themed, <laughs> like it's it's meant to be used as a way to check in with your students during distance learning. And I'm just kind of going to continue to add free resources there because I think it's a really easy place for you to just go download and, and print or save digitally um, during this time. If you're on my email list, you'll also get them by email. So that's another um, easy way to keep up with the free resources I'll be creating over the next couple of months. But um, my TPT shop is called Spark Creativity. Um, and yeah, I will be featuring whatever I create over the next few months there, um, for easy download. Okay. Number four, 
The most helpful tools that have floated to the surface for me personally um, are Screencastify, where you can just quickly go on and record yourself introducing an activity or an idea, and Google Meet, where you can meet up with students live online. Um, You can have them put a post-it over their camera if you're concerned about privacy, which I think is an issue. Um, But then I think something that I've been thinking about a lot is how to get kids off their screens. Because as I've been checking in with students, they are on their screens so much right now. (laughs) They're on their screens for school for like six or seven hours, and then they're on their screens to be with their friends, and then they're on their screens to entertain themselves. And that all adds up to so much screen. And so a suggestion that I have is if you can, if you can record a two minute video explaining what you want them to do, or if you can meet them in Google Meet for uh, five minutes and talk to them and connect with them and then get them off and get them going to do something else. um, I think that that is really a gift to them. So I know that there's so many incredible programs and apps and free resources and and that's all wonderful and we have to use that a lot. (laughs) But, But sometimes if you can get them reading a book or doing a one-pager at their kitchen table or creating sketch notes um, or doing blackout poetry and then sending pictures of that to you later, I think that's really helpful because, gosh, it's just hard on your body and it's hard on your mind to be on the screen so much. I know you know. And then finally, my fifth sort of big picture takeaway from these last few weeks is to remember that that maybe now is a time for less. And I've talked about this with different people and gotten perspective from different people. But one thing that really struck me was a teacher, Joyce Bauman, who int- who emailed me this week and said that she had read on Twitter, cut your expectations in half and then cut them in half again. And I think that's really helpful. Like as a parent right now who's, who's home <laughs> trying to work and I have my four-year-old and my eight-year-old and, you know, sometimes my husband can go into work and sometimes he needs to work from home and, you know, there's a lot going on in our house. And if, if I was trying to help my eight-year-old be on his screen to be in class from eight in the morning until three in the afternoon, um, that would be impossibly difficult for me. And it would be impossibly difficult for him. As it is, he's getting about an hour of work from his teacher a day. And I can also kind of homeschool him with his sister. And we can do art projects and cooking projects and listen to music together and watch a movie together. And and there's just not as much tension and turmoil as there would be if he had this sort of endless to-do list and I was trying to keep him on that. And I feel like the same thing would be true if he was a fifth grader or an eighth grader or an 11th grader where we can give some peace and where we can where we can make this about connection and creativity and and helping kids to have something to engage with that is meaningful to them I think that is so wonderful I do not think we need to be covering the same content that we would have covered if we were all at school so um, that is my final big thought let's remember that less is more Okay, so those are my big thoughts about education right now and distance learning. (laughs) And you can also listen to uh, the last podcast episode that had more strategies for for teaching right now. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like just being at home right now. Just I thought it might be helpful for you to see something in in kind of a picture of our life that might give you some some ideas for your life right now um, and also just help you to feel like you're not alone. So I want to talk to you about the good, the bad, the tasty, the comforting, the difficult surprises, the nice surprises of life at home for us. Let's start with the good. I'm a pretty introverted person, to be honest, even though I'm a podcaster. And so to be honest, staying home all the time just isn't really that hard for me. With my kids activities Pinterest page and my huge art shelf in the playroom I've got some serious preschool teacher leaning Jones going on anyway I I like creating activities for my kids and doing them with them I also like wearing the same comfortable clothes all the time I have this really comfortable pair of jeans this cozy gray stripy sweatshirt and I'm basically wearing them all the time I also really like having the time to cook meals for my family and actually having them there to eat the meals at the end of the day. It's really nice. Nobody has to stay at work. Nobody has um, some activity that they're dashing off to um, 
And so I appreciate that family time and I appreciate that we're all there to have it together. I like being able to teach my kids some things that I've kind of always been meaning to teach them. We've been teaching and talking and singing a little bit of Spanish. We've been doing more music. I've been teaching my son a little bit of piano on this tiny little toy piano that we have. We've been talking more with grandparents. It has been really nice for me to take walks and to just like carefully be following the progress of spring. I check on my lilacs every day and see how much bigger the buds have gotten. I pick daffodils um, from the area near our house and uh, it's really meaningful to me to see those flowers every day. That all makes me really happy. Then there are the hard things. I am not great at Google Hangouts so far. I've got a lot of different Gmail accounts, a lot of different browsers, all these different Chrome extensions that have apparently been making it tricky for me to get everything working. So that has been frustrating. Another frustrating and difficult thing for us has been sort of figuring out what's going to happen for us in the future. We have been doing job interviews and thinking about moving abroad with our family. And now all those interviews have gone online. We can't visit any of the places we were thinking about working um, or meet any of the people that we'd be working with. And so it just makes me feel scared and it makes me feel like things are in too much upheaval to leave. And yet, you know, do you postpone a dream that you've had for a long time just because of like, a, a temporary crisis. What's what's the right thing to do? I don't know. And that has been a, a confusing and difficult thing for us right now. It was also really hard. Um, my daughter had a big crash with my son and when they were playing and we ended up having to take her to the hospital for stitches. And that was, of course, terrifying. And <laughs> um, we've had to go back for two follow-ups and those have been difficult but uh, she's been super tough. <laughs> we got her an Elsa dress as a bravery award afterwards. And um, she now says it was definitely worth it to get all of the special attention and sort of <laughs> gifts that she's gotten to help her feel better. So phew, <laughs> I'm glad that she's doing so much better and that she, she sees it all as a positive experience in the end for the most part. I love seeing all the ways people are supporting each other. We have so enjoyed doing the Mo Willems draws activity every day, me and my children. We hang out with Mo in his studio at the Kennedy Center where he's the artist in residence. I see so many teachers creating things to share with each other. Um, so many companies opening up their resources, Wi-Fi platforms sort of blanketing areas that don't have Wi-Fi. It's really neat to see how people are pulling together as a community at this time. Um, I thought I would talk just a little bit about how I'm homeschooling my kids because you might be in my same boat where you kind of need to keep your kids going <laughs> during the day. My kids are four and eight. And I think if we just, if I just tried to have them kind of free playing and occasionally doing little bursts of reading and writing for school and, uh, just for their own edification, that wouldn't work. They need a little more structure than that. We can't just have a weekend for three months. I don't know if you feel the same way, but that would really not work for our family. So early on when I was feeling really anxious about all this, I spent a ton of time on early childhood education websites, kind of turned our playroom into a Montessori space and stuffed most of the toys into one corner of my office where they currently look incredibly cluttered and ridiculous. <laughs> I went on TPT and bought all these early childhood sets um, that actually my daughter isn't that interested in. But uh, And then I found that some wonderful children's teaching blogs like Pickle Bums and Art Bar and Tinker Lab. And I love getting printables and ideas from them. So we kind of have this general routine that's working really well for us. Um, we do a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of talk about the calendar early in the day, a little bit of mindfulness. I share with them a little bit about a country that I've been to, and we watch drone videos online. I get them going on an art project, and that lasts for a while. Get them going on some music, whether it's listening to some songs online like Lori Berkner or Disney songs um, or watching musicals. They love the sound of music. Now we're doing Mary Poppins Returns 
and I got the free three month Apple Music trial on my phone so we can listen to anything we want if we want to learn a song. Then we've done some fun things like connects challenges and Lego challenges and maker challenges and building challenges. We really like this one we found on Tinker Lab where you take like a paper bag and you turn it into something you can wear. That was super fun. We've done some like low key science experiments. Um, and then we give a lot of attention to recess or gym. <laughs> we make things for snacks. Um, for reading, we have loved the program Epic, which just has a ton of books online, both books that can be read to kids. So my youngest daughter just has them read to her or audiobooks or books that the kids can just read and swipe their finger to turn the page. And you can get a free trial of Epic for a month. That's what we're doing. Um, and both kids really like it. So they go into cozy chairs with headphones and do Epic for a while during reading that is super helpful. If you're trying to get work done, um, they can do that for a while and, and they're pretty happy. Um, I also try to get my oldest to read actual books sometimes cause I like to get him off the screen. Uh, for writing, we've done different things like writing letters to family. My, my son got his first letter back from his cousin and he's starting to realize, Ooh, like this pen pal thing could actually be really cool. He writes me back. <laughs> so that, that has been fun. Um, he wrote sort of a version of a Mo Willems book. I don't know if you know the don't let the pigeon books, but he wrote his own don't let the pigeon book. And that was really fun. Um, and his teacher is starting to send out writing prompts now. So that works also for writing. One of the trickiest things is just kind of the fact that my son would be at school for seven hours a day and my daughter would be at school for three hours a day, three days a week, <laughs> lots of which is playing and snack time. So sort of figuring out how to keep them both happy at the same time is so tricky, but we try to build in just tons of art and music and cooking and playing and outside time intermixed with the reading and the writing. Um, and that's really helpful. So yeah, that's a little look at life for us. Um, I'm basically doing almost all of my work late at night right now, which I know is a luxury for me. I don't need to show up at a specific time and place during the day most of the time. Sometimes I do, but um, it has kind of worked out that my husband could be with the kids when I needed to, and, and mostly I can push my work off to after the kids go to bed. But some of the things that we're doing, like epic and art projects and, you know, recess outside in the yard, um, I think could correlate pretty well with moments where you could get on and, and kind of have half an hour where you were meeting with a class or recording a screencastify video to, rec to, uh, post for your class. So anyway, just, um, wanted to share and I want you to know you're not alone. <laughs> we're all going through this. It's crazy. Um, but we will get through it. So, um, thanks for joining me. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're well. I hope you're getting along all right during this crazy time. I'm hoping to be a helpful support to you. I have six interviews recorded and waiting to release about a lot of different creative teaching topics, but I think I'm going to save them for a while and just kind of take this crisis one episode at a time. I'd really like to be sharing things that are helpful in this moment. So if there's anything you wish I would research for you or anyone you wish I would interview whose take you'd like on all this right now, please don't hesitate to drop me a direct message on Instagram. I'm at now spark creativity or email me at Betsy at now spark creativity.com. <laughs>